I'm going to show you 10 amateur mistakes I see in ZBrush that steal away students' time. Watch this video to save yourself stress in the future because they're bound to come up. I teach at university and these problems are so common. I'm always repeating myself and I feel like I should tattoo them on my arm to save a bit of time. Little less painful route, we're just going to make a video for today. I've added a bonus at the end and there are two videos to come on intermediate and professional mistakes. So if you like to save research time, make sure you subscribe and watch out for those videos. So let's see these mistakes. to know as a beginner you should remain ambitious with your sculpting so go ahead with lots of discovery and momentum at any point you can come back on this slider and undo the things that you've already done if you are a bit scared of that you can always duplicate your sub object so it's nice to work with something off to the side a bit more advanced is you can also clone your tool and that's basically going to make a copy of your sub tool and then you can work on this and maybe bring it back into your project also remember to save lots of increments so you can have something to fall back on a useful one is pressing nine and that's going to auto save it's just a very quick save and that's going to go into your default directory. Take note that this scene isn't optimized for when you're first starting out. So the first thing we have is a gradient. That's going to be very difficult to understand what the silhouette is on your model. So what you want to do is come to documents and then you're going to change this rate slider and click zero. So it's going to give you a nice gray background where you can use different materials and then understand the silhouette of your model. So another thing by default, we might not be using the full real estate of our screen. We've kind of got this letterbox to sculpt in. I'm good if you want to move the camera around because you can always come off to the side outside the canvas. But if it's annoying, you come up to documents and then with W size selected, we're going to go new document. That's basically going to resize the entire canvas and then we can redraw the model, press T and F, and then we've got a bigger use of the entire screen. It's free real estate. Consider this, you've got a big project with loads of sub tools and to find something, you're probably gonna open up the side panels. What you can do is just press Alt and then click on the screen that's gonna select the object. Also at the same time, you can press N and then that's gonna give you a visual representation of all your sub tools. So just a really fast way of selecting things. This is a common and vital one, so listen carefully. I've got two models here. One's about 200K active points and the second is about 3 million. So they're gonna have different features. Whenever I hold Shift and use a smooth, you can observe that the smoothing effect is happening very effectively yet on the second one with more geometry it's having less of an impact so as you're sculpting make sure that you're having a correct amount of geometry and also don't go too high because it's going to basically uh, blow your computer up while I'm teaching at university, this one happens a lot. So picture this, you're working along and then suddenly everything turns black. And um, what's happening there is you're probably pressing C and C is a color picker. So wherever your cursor is, it's gonna pick up that color and turn your sub tools to that. So chances are you're hovering over your background and pressing C and it fills it in. Everything that's gonna get filled in on the sub tools is anything that doesn't have this little paintbrush check. So if you don't want this effect to happen, just go through your sub tools and make sure you check this little paintbrush. And then whenever you do press C, it's not going to all change color. I'm going to slip this in as a bit of a bonus. That's what she said. <laughs> as default, you're going to have this red wax material applied. Now it's not very good because when you change the lighting, you can't see highlights and shadows that well. And fundamentally, when you're sculpting something, that's how you see 3D objects. So what I want you to do is go into materials and just change this to a basic material. And then you can see the representations much better. Um, at this point as well, if you're enjoying the video, I say subscribe and like so I can do more of these in the future. Also, there's the Discord channel at the bottom where a lot of people are getting a lot of feedback and giving video suggestions like this so make sure you check those out grasp this concept that zbrush has a bit of an arbitrary scaling unit when it comes to making things so it's going to cause problems in different softwares because we're using centimeters and real world units like uh, physically based rendering so you want to build your project around something like a human thankfully in zbrush if you press comma on the keyboard it's going to bring you up to your projects and then you've got a male and female so i suggest as a beginner just starting with that and then building around Around it so you've got the right scale reference. Pay attention because this will happen many times in your sculpting and ZBrush career. And what it is, is when you're sculpting away, maybe focused on a certain area and then you come out to see it, you notice that you haven't been working in symmetry. And it's very frustrating when that happens. So before you zoom in, just make sure that you've got symmetry activated. It's really clearly indicated when you've got these two dots and symmetry is by pressing X. So you don't have to go into the transform hotkeys. Now, if that has happened to you and we want to take this masterpiece from the left and put it onto the right so it has symmetry, I want you to come into the geometry section and then under modify topology, we've got a button called mirror and weld and here it's selected in X. So what it's going to do is take the left from the right and then we've got our symmetry back. So just remember again to press X so you can see those two dots and now you can work with it. So listen carefully to this one because it can be pretty brutal if it goes wrong. It certainly happened to a couple of my students and maybe to me in the past, but I can't really remember. 
And that is when it comes to saving your 3D objects. So not to your fault, under documents, there's gonna be save and save as. That's not gonna save your 3D element. It's only gonna save an image or the canvas, basically. What we're after is something called file and save as. And what that's gonna do, it's gonna save a project. And within a project, it's saving brush settings and all these units. So all these units are called tools. And you can also save tools independently. So for example, if I come to tools and press save as, it's only gonna save what I have selected. And what I have selected here, you can see an indication that it's my project called head and it's got 75 subtools. So all the subtools are down here and it's gonna save all of those. As an addition, and it's sort of happening here, if you ever do lose something, ZBrush is always gonna auto save incrementally. Um, so if something crashes, you can go back, press comma and find a, something called quick saves. So here I can press comma and then go on to quick save. And it's just a list of projects that um, have previously saved. So the next is a bit of a nuance that ZBrush has. It's super annoying. And it's basically when you're trying to change the size of your brush, you'll see if I press space, I can change the draw size here, but it reaches a certain limit. So to remove that limit, while I continue press space, I can double click this very, very small word called dynamic. And yes, that is a button. So if I double click it, like a bit of a puzzle, I then get access to the full range of the brushes. Uh, you can also find it in the top right here under the draw size. So just double click it. So here's the bonus tip. And I bet some of you pros didn't know that three existed. I see that often in the industry, people forget that they can do that. Now this one's a bit more of an intermediate tip. And also there's gonna be an intermediate video sort of based on the same one that I've just done here. There's a bit of an additional learning that comes with this, and it's in regards to something called Dynamesh and subdivisions and how beginners start to use that. So often what will happen is that uh, beginners won't have the resolution that they need to sculpt things. So what they'll do is they'll come into geometry and then they'll just smash this button called divide and it's gonna incrementally give more and more geometry and it's gonna tank uh, your computer and reduce the strength of your smooth and stuff. Um, but when you sort of like start to learn things, even when it comes to a hard surface, we do wanna stay quite a long time in something called Dynamesh. And Dynamesh basically gives you lots of options to combine things, uh, fuse them together, smooth them, and re-Dynamesh them. But when we go too early into subdivisions, we lose access to all those abilities. So obviously there's a lot of information there. I suggest looking at one of the videos that I have on Dynamesh and subdivisions. But if you look at this object here, I'm still using Dynamesh and only towards the very end will I remesh it and use subdivisions. Or for example, if I've got something that's very tubular or very refined, maybe it's from Maya or Blender, that's when I would use subdivisions because it's a very said piece and I'm not gonna change it that much. I'm only gonna add details to it. So when you're beginning, really do take time to understand what subdivisions are and Dynamesh, and then it's gonna transfer you well onto intermediate and pro things. So hear me out, if you're a beginner, make sure you follow on to the intermediate videos, which is under the same sort of uh, concepts. I'll also be doing a pro one and those are gonna be released. So make sure you subscribe. Also, we have a Discord community down in the link below and lots of people are giving feedback to each other and also suggesting other formats for the videos. So make sure you join those. There's also an email where I'm releasing welcome packages to people for free. So check those out.